John Sheridan is our guest. He is the president and CEO of Ballard Power Systems, has been since 2006. When you sat down at the executive desk, did you have a list of wishes, uh, challenges, where you want to take the company? I did, and it's been quite a journey because if you go back in the history of Ballard, the original driving force of Ballard was to replace the internal combustion engine in cars with fuel cell systems. Right. Wonderful dream, wonderful vision, and that will happen. But that's a long-term challenge. So right now in fuel cell cars, the technology is being developed for early commercial introduction in 2015, 2016. So if you go back to where we were at the time in Ballard in 2006, that's a long time to go before you have mm -hmm. a product you can sell to make money for your shareholders. So part of the challenge and part of the game plan we developed was how do we continue that momentum in developing fuel cell car technology? And we did a deal with Ford and Daimler to make that happen so that Ballard could focus on short-term commercial markets. That was the game plan. So Ford and Daimler, are they uh, inventing in the Ford factory? Or wh where's the research and development happening? We're inventing right here in BC. Okay. So at our campus in Burnaby, what we did is we, we created a, a separate company with Ford and Daimler, private company, totally funded by Ford and Daimler, moved 112 of our people into that company. Ford and Daimler added more employees. And the sole focus of that group, it's called AFCC, the sole focus of that group is to develop the next generation of fuel cell car technology. And how different is a hybrid car from a fuel cell technology car? What's different? It's a lot different, actually. So hybrids are great, and hybrids are a big step forward. But hybrids are complicated, and hybrids still have harmful emissions. Because the hybrid, at the end of the day, is your typical gasoline, internal combustion mm -hmm. engine, plus batteries. Right, and what do you do with the batteries when it's all over? And what do you all do with that? the batteries when it's all over? And when you're not using the batteries, you're consuming gasoline, and you've got emissions, sure. et cetera, and you're paying a lot of money for gasoline. So, but, but part of the driving cycle of the hybrid is through electricity provided by the battery. If you look at fuel cells, fuel cells is the ultimate clean solution for a car because it's 100% electricity, clean electricity through the fuel cell. Uh, what is the difference between clean electricity and dirty electricity, like in an electric car. As right. you know, uh, there are electric cars right. coming now. What's the difference? Right. So when I, I talk about dirty electricity, uh, quite often an example would be better with a diesel generator. You know, you mm -hmm. could have one in your home or in your cabin. You fire right. it up, you produce electricity, but how do you do it? By combustion with diesel, noise, emissions. If you think of battery electric cars, that's a huge step forward because there's no internal combustion if you've got an all-battery right. electric car. Mm -hmm. But part of the challenge there is range. You've got to stop and charge batteries. Mm -hmm. And part of the problem, as you said, what do you do when the battery life is over? Batteries aren't very environmentally friendly. No, and the power, the grid. I mean, we want to light the house, heat the house, do all of that, and drive the car, so you have to plug your car in. Right. And one of the challenges with the grid is it was never designed to have people charge cars mm -hmm. at different points where they live. That's going to be a real challenge mm -hmm. to the grid. So best case scenario, a hydrogen car available at a Ford dealership. How far down the road? Well, I think the best case available is more and more cars that depend less on gas. So I don't want to move away from hybrids. They'll be a big part of the future. Mm -hmm. Battery electric cars will be part of the future. But again, the fuel cell car is the ultimate answer. So when early stage commercialization of fuel cell cars, 2015, 2016. Okay. That's what Ford, Daimler, Toyota, General Motors are all focused on. Uh, on the uh, hydrogen highway, what does that mean, the hydrogen highway? Highway from uh, uh, Alaska to Mexico or well, what? It's a good question. Uh, part of the hydrogen highway orientation was work between uh, uh, Premier Campbell and Governor Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. to envisage hydrogen fueling stations right from California up to BC. So there, there was and is a physical element to the hydrogen highway. But when we talk hydrogen highway more broadly, it, it's more the enabling platform for all sorts of hydrogen fuel cell applications, stationary power as well as okay. motor power. Buses, trucks, transport. Backup power, distributed generation, all of that. What about a train? 
Well, uh, we actually are working with a number of players to provide bus-type fuel cell modules to power locomotives. So that's doable. It sure. won't be mainstream, but it is doable. Uh, uh, in the future, a fleet of buses, uh, hydrogen-powered, fuel cell-powered, not diesel-powered? Yes. Dream. No. Cleaner? Well, it, it, it's a dream, but it's reality. Again, part of what Ballard's been focused on over the last three, four, five years is step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step progress, working with customers, getting the technology into products that meet customers' value propositions. Okay, and keeping so, the cost down. Bringing the cost down successively, more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to buses, we've got our fleet of 20 buses in Whistler today. They're in service today. That's what people in Whistler ride. It's got over a million kilometers on that fleet. We're working in Brazil today for buses. We're working in Germany today with buses. Really? We've got buses going into Norway later this year. So it's not a distant dream. Mm -hmm. It's today. It's happening. It's happening. Uh, and you showcase that technology extremely well, as you suggest, at, at the Olympics. Other countries uh, you would like to break into, you are in uh, uh, Latin America, Norway, a given. Right. I would think the Norwegians, of course, would right. like that. What about uh, third world? Third world's interesting, and, and, and again, if you step back, one of the things that's exciting about this technology is it can play strongly in different applications in different markets. So when we think third world, and we're active in India, we're active in Southeast, other Southeast Asian countries, part of the focus there isn't buses. It's just trying to deal with very unreliable grids. So the focus there is more in terms of backup power, continuous power to augment the grid. Mm. Uh, golf carts. People I know that sounds a little trite, but some of some of those golf carts are fueled by gas. Right. People have talked about golf carts for years, and I'm a golfer, mm -hmm. so I find that interesting. Could work, absolutely, but right. is it a main it's not focus? Not a priority. Not a priority. <laughs> but forklifts, uh, uh, working machines. Great question and a great uh, example. So we have over a thousand forklifts, primarily in the U.S. today, some in Canada that are powered by fuel cells. So what's exciting is if you look at these distribution centers and factories that have made the conversion, they took out all their batteries. Their lead acid batteries are gone. Mm -hmm. All the facilities they had to charge lead acid batteries are gone. It's all fuel cell powered. So we see that will happen more and more. Mm -hmm. So the clean energy dream, essentially. Uh, when you get together with other uh, techno geniuses and uh, fuel cell people, uh, 20 years down the road, uh, running out of cheap oil. Right. What's it look like? What's it look like? Well, if we're successful, and we really believe we will be successful, and most importantly, we see the progress today, what it's going to look like, I think, is people will take fuel cell technology for granted. They'll see the applications in transportation and stationary power. They'll see it fitting nicely with solar and wind. There is no one silver bullet in terms mm -hmm. of a clean energy technology. It's going to be these different technologies working together. Sure. What about commitment from the countries? Uh, signing accords, as you know, that's always controversial, the politics of it. It is. And I think, you know, to be frank, I've been frustrated because I think some countries today are, are so short-sighted in terms of their policy mm -hmm. challenges, the political issues, etc. But on the other hand, we've had some significant support from governments in the U.S., more recently in Canada, we're pleased to see great support here in BC from Premier Campbell and now uh, Premier Clark. Uh, the EU is very, very strongly supportive of fuel cells, so it is growing. That's good. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, he has other problems today. He's, he's addressing <laughs> his own problems, and we won't go there. No, he's no longer the governor, but he's in a lot of trouble he today. Is. Indeed. Fanny, I thank pleasure. you. Nice thank to you. meet you. Uh, John Sheridan, CEO, President of Bellard Power Systems.